Hey, there it's me Eden. If you are new to the channel then please subscribe to my channel and visit my Patreon page for early access. Link in the comment, thanks. As we walked up the street, Anita linked her arm through mine. I could feel the warmth of her pressing against me. In spite of my attire, I felt somehow that I had might make some progress with her. So it's just me and you now, she said, lifting her shoulders slightly in a show of pleasure. Right through until nine tomorrow evening. It hadn't really occurred to me until that point that I was going to spend so much time in Anita's company. Although my boots hurt, and the denim mini skirt restricted my walking, I was beginning to think that perhaps agreeing to enter the contest hadn't been such a bad plan after all. I was put on the defensive by Anita's next comment though. So you can start by telling me why you were acting so funny at Nikki's just then. I was caught off my guard. I shook my head, I don't know what you mean. Yes, you do. You were being all gushy about that dress. Well, I stumbled for words. It was nice. I know that. So was the one in the shop, you didn't gush about that. In fact you haven't gushed about anything else we've got you to wear. Some of the hair from my wig fell across my face in the gentle breeze, and I brushed it away. I really didn't want to tell Anita about what had happened in the shop, it seemed so unmanly. Well, I just liked it. I said feebly, unable to make eye contact with her. Rubbish. Anita responded. You just didn't want to go back to the shop, did you? No, I whispered, after a pause. But why not? Even if you didn't want to wear the pink dress, there were hundreds more you could have tried. I know, I replied. It wasn't that. I just didn't like Sylvia. Sylvia, why? She seemed nice enough to me. I shook my head again. I don't know. I just didn't. Anita wasn't going to let this go. She seemed friendly enough when you were in the changing room together. She paused for a moment, but I still resolutely refused eye contact. In fact, if I didn't know better, I'd say you were snogging. No. I responded vehemently. You were, weren't you? Anita went on, having found a weak spot in my defenses. That's what this is all about. She snogged you, and you didn't like it. That's why you didn't want to go back to the shop. Admit it. I continued walking, trembling at the memory. I thought it was because you didn't want to have to work there but it's not that is it? She snogged you, and you didn't like it. I decided to admit to some of what she was saying at least. Well, she did try and get a bit friendly. I admitted. Steve, she squealed. I cringed, because a couple on the opposite side of the road turned their heads to see what the fuss was about. I tugged Anita's arm gently, and nodded my head in their direction. She acknowledged my concern, but went on. You are a dark horse. She's twice your age for a start. It wasn't my fault. I exclaimed. But you must have done something to encourage her. I shook my head. No, I blurted. She just put her hand up my skirt to straighten my slip, then she got a bit carried away. Anita's face showed both her amusement and her surprise. Well that was encouraging her for a start, letting her put her hand up your skirt. Well you did it earlier, I said defensively. She considered this for a moment. Well, yes. But I was showing you what to do. She looked at me for a while again, and shook her head. I can't leave you alone for a moment can I? Ten minutes alone in a changing room with another woman, and you already let her put her hands up your skirt. I was blushing furiously by this point, and bit my lip to relieve my anguish. So is that why you burst out crying then? Because she'd tried it on with you? I hung my head in shame rather than reply. 
I thought it was just that you'd got a bit overcome, like you did in my kitchen earlier. Again I made no reply. That too was a painful memory. Anita shook her head. Well, it looks as if I should give you some lessons in repelling unwanted advances along with all your other lessons in being a girl. She hugged my arm in a friendly way, and I managed a wan smile. We're nearly there now, she told me, and I realized that we had turned into the street where she lived. We walked along the road to her house, through her gate, and up her path. Oh, she said, as we approached the front door. It looks as if my mom and dad are back. I immediately froze, my feet rooted to the path through my boots. What's the matter? she asked. My eyes were wide with terror. Your parents! I hissed. Well, what about it? You knew you'd be meeting them eventually. Yes, I know. But I thought I'd have time to gather myself together first. She shrugged. Well, you won't, she said bluntly. Come on, let's get in, and I'll introduce you. She rummaged about in her bag and found her keys, and then walked to the front door. I still stood immobile in the middle of the path. Come on, Steve, she urged, and then smiling said, Oh, I mean Sarah, of course. I inched forward towards the door, my head spinning. I was about to be introduced to Anita's parents as Sarah. She opened the door, and we walked through into the hallway. Anita called out a greeting, and there was a muffled female reply from the kitchen. Anita's mum appeared, an older version of Anita herself, with tidy blonde hair and blue eyes. She smiled at me. Well, you're back, she said. Yes, replied Anita. Mum, this is Sarah, a new girl at school. Hello Sarah, said Mrs. Robinson in a friendly way. I manage to smile and whispers more than say a greeting in return. She's dead good at French. We've got some homework to do, and I was wondering if she could sleep over tonight. Mrs. Robinson looked at me. Good at French, what was Anita thinking of? Of all the subjects at school, languages were probably my worst. Yes, that's fine, as long as Sarah's parents are okay with it. Yes, responded Anita. We spoke to them earlier. There were footsteps on the stairs beside us, and out of the corner of my eye I saw a hand on the banister. Hello Anita. Who's this? A masculine voice asked. Hi Dad. This is my friend Sarah. Anita replied brightly. Her father reached the bottom of the stairs and turned up the hall to where we were. He was around fifty, small, but well built. He held his hand out to me. Hello Sarah. I took his hand weakly, out of fear, but it did occur to me that it was a feminine gesture. Hello, I said, as sweetly as I could. Anita asked if Sarah can sleep over tonight, Mrs. Robinson said, talking to her husband. Apparently she's a whiz at French. She's going to help Anita with their homework. Mr. Robinson looked at me. Well, if you can help Anita with that, you're a better teacher than any she's had at the school. Well it's okay, by me, but you'd best check with your parents Sarah. We already have, put in Anita. He looked from me to her. Yes, he said. Good. But one thing first Anita, the house was a right mess when we got back. There were clothes all over the place. Anita looked contrite. Yes. I'm sorry. We meant to get back earlier to tidy up a bit. He looked sternly at her. Yes, well that would have helped. He went over to the table by the front door and picked something up. And I found these in the hall. Like a trophy, he was holding up my underpants from the morning. I cringed, I had discarded them in the hall and not picked them up. Now we were done for, I was sure. Oh, I'm sorry dad, Anita responded, in her best sorry voice. 
We were playing dressing up. With boys' underwear, her mother asked, incredulously. Anita thought about this. No, but one of the boys from school was here. We dared him to put on a pair of my knickers, didn't we, Sarah? I was baffled by this subterfuge, but nodded my head eagerly. He must have left them behind. Anita went on. So what did he go home in then, her mother asked, not unreasonably. My knickers, Anita replied, almost without hesitation. That was part of the dare. Her father looked at us, and raised his eyebrows. Well, he said, I'm not sure like the sound of all that. What do you want me to do with these? Throw them away, Anita replied. I almost turned to her to object, but held myself back. It serves him right for leaving them here. Well he might throw your knickers away as well, her mother said. Not that you're short of a pair or two. Her father still looked stern. Yes, well I think I'll just do that. In my day young men didn't go leaving their pants all over the place, or go home in girls' knickers. He walked past us to the kitchen, and out into the backyard, carrying my underpants. This was terrible. If he really did throw them away, as Anita had suggested, not only would be addressed as a girl until nine o'clock the following evening, I'd even have to go home in Anita's knickers. What time's tea? Anita asked her mother. Well, George and I thought we might ring through for a pizza, her mother said. Do you like pizzas, Sarah? Yes, I answered, again as sweetly as I could. Good. Then that's what we'll do. It'll probably be ready in half an hour or so. Okay, Mom. Sarah and I'll go upstairs and play some records or something until they come. Anita replied and led me up the stairs to her bedroom. The irony of it did not escape me. I had waited years to get into a bedroom with Anita, and now I at last I was about to. There was only one thing wrong, something that didn't gel with the dream scenario. I was wearing a pale blue sweater and denim mini skirt, as well as girls' underwear and makeup. As we entered the room, it occurred to me that in my dreams, Anita was wearing more or less what I was, and I would have been wearing a plain t-shirt and jeans, exactly the outfit Anita had on. Anita was an only child, and her room was quite big. The bed itself didn't dominate the room as much as it did in mine. Along one wall was a built-in wardrobe, the center of which was a dressing table of sorts, with a low-level mirror. The doors on the cupboards were covered in pictures of pop stars and various film hunks. Thanks for that. I said. What? My pants. The ones your dad is just throwing away. Well what else could I have done, she asked. I thought I did pretty well covering your arse with that story anyway. She was cross with me, and it was a fair point. Much as I was angry at my underpants being thrown away, and being stuck in girls' knickers even longer, she did make up the story to cover me from being discovered. I'm sorry, I mumbled. Yes, it was a good cover story. She looked over to me. Yes, it was, she said. You know it wouldn't really matter if they knew you were a boy. They'd understand, you know about the contest and everything. I felt a sense of panic, did this mean she planned to tell them? Yes, I stuttered. But I'd still rather they didn't know. Oh me too, she declared enthusiastically. They'd never let you sleep over if they knew you were a boy. She sat on the bed, and motioned for me to sit next to her. With some caution, I did so, remembering to smooth my skirt out before I did. You're getting quite good at that, she congratulated me. I don't think anyone would have seen your knickers that time. I smiled thinly at her compliment. Then a thought occurred to me from what she had said. Don't they let John sleep over then? I asked, as casually as I could. No, she responded, as if shocked. They would never allow that sort of thing. 
My heart jumped for joy. In the pangs of jealousy I often suffered when thinking about Anita and John, I envisaged them making love rampantly, here on this very bed. She stood up again and went to a sideboard on which there was a stereo system. Selecting a tape, she slipped it into the machine and switched it on. She had chosen something fairly anodyne, I was a heavy metal fan myself, but the music was fairly soothing. She sat down next to me on the bed, causing me to bounce a little as the mattress readjusted itself. You don't mind, do you? she asked. Mind what? Well, dressing up as a girl. I know you've complained about it, and I know you won't necessarily want to admit to liking it or anything, but you don't really mind, do you? I shrugged, I wasn't at all sure where she was heading with this. Because it would be awful if you hated me forever for doing this to you, she went on, with the same sweetness of voice and tone that I had tried to use on her parents. I won't, I stammered. Good, she said enthusiastically. I want to be your friend forever, especially now you've done all this for me. She placed her hand tenderly on my knee. I can't imagine many boys would have agreed to all this, she went on. I mean, I know there's lots going in for the contest, but I bet they won't be practicing as much as you, and I bet they won't be wearing the right underwear and stuff. You're just so good to me. She removed her hand. I looked at her eager face and her smile. No, it's fine really, I managed to say. You're a great friend Steve, she declared, and then, with a conspiratorial look on her face, and a mischievous grin continued, or I should say Sarah here shouldn't I, in case my mom or dad are listening at the door. I winced at her preferred name for me, but said, probably. And you're so good at it too. I mean, I knew you'd be all right as a girl, you're fairly small and quite good looking, that's why Nikki and I decided to ask you, but I never dreamed you'd be this brilliant at it. I looked at her smiling face. She was genuinely pleased that I looked so good as a girl, there was no doubt about it. I decided to take a different track. So why exactly did you decide to ask me? I asked, hoping against hope that the answer may have something to do with fancying me. I told you, she replied. You're nice and small, and quite good looking. That's the sort of boy we thought would look best as a girl. But I'm hardly the smallest in the school, I said, to defend myself. Anita considered this for a moment. No, you're not, she conceded. We did think of asking Peter, but Chrissy had already nabbed him. Peter Jones? Yes, she replied. Peter was a small asthmatic kid, with blonde, almost albino hair and looks. He looked more like a corpse than a girl to me, he was always so pale and washed out. Just like Chrissy to try and get in first, Anita spat. Chrissy was Anita's bet noir, her enemy amongst all enemies. I had no real idea why. They had gone to junior school together, and by the time I met them, they were already at one another's throats. Anita was fairly restrained in her hatred, but Chrissy went out of her way to try and make Anita's life difficult, I had noticed that. When we were younger it would be with little trips as Anita walked by, or the occasional pulling of hair. More recently it had been with snide comments about her looks or her clothes. Please subscribe for the next part. And visit my Patreon page for early access.